Hi, it's your friendly pest. Um, I didn't finish, and I'm um, ah, I'm getting tired. You must be sick of it. Like we've we've committed to this, and now it's a burden. Anything that you have to do, anything that you have to do, Wally likes to um, scoop his hand and get your get your attention. He's a sweet boy. Um, he's much more tactile because he has half a poodle. He's a whoopoo, and um, he loves toys. Look at the toy. He loves toys and bones. Uh, <laughs> and he's he's just so different. Baby's never had a bone or a toy in her life. Um, but he'll cry for him. Oh, you just see him in the store. It's like a three year old child, Wally. He's so the poodle part of him is so smart, um, that I can teach him just about anything. So enough about my wonderful dog. We all think we are the best ones of all. He's three. And before Wally <laughs> before he Hi, Wally. High five. High five. Before I, um, he was about two, he was really naughty. And so their names are, you know, Labradoodle, Golden Doodle, and I call Wally a naughty doodle. He's a hunting dog. He loves water. He would get in the water dish all the time. And he would, Wally, he would get a little bit naughty because he would chase bikes and everything. And we're in Yuma, which is a retirement community where I bought my home. And he'd bolt, bolt after someone in a golf cart or riding a bike. He won't hurt you, I'd say. But, you know, after they break their hip and realize that he's not going to hurt them. So I called him a naughty doodle. But he's a good boy now. Yes, he is. He has to be everywhere. If I go to the, toilet, the bathroom, he's going to be sitting right next to me. He's had some horrific... Anyway, this is me. This is my normal me. I'm almost always in a cap. It's my lazy... Uh, thing people wouldn't recognize me with my hair down. I've people have said sir to me because <laughs> I'll wear a big jacket and, and I'm sure I look like a man. Oh well, but um, this I'm not gonna do a song. I was gonna do um, Linda Ronstadt's somewhere out there, but um, I want to apologize first of all. I um, I don't think that it's necessary to slam dunk information that's that critical and uh, is going to cause pain um, in this fashion. And if I had not been um, blocked by three sheriffs or poli police outside of uh, your venue, you know, they said, Cornelia, yeah, you're not welcome here. What the hell? So they were watching me. They knew when I was in town, uh, when I was across the street waiting for you. I, and I, the deal was, when I showed up, I wanted to meet you, I went to the office, and I had already written you a letter, and I put $50 in it, and I wanted it to get to you. And then I thought, what if they, because everything I've sent you has been intercepted, what if they um, intercepted it? So I went to the office, and I said, I, I have a, a letter, I was down at the doggy area, because I was with the dogs, and I have this letter for, that has Lena Primus name on it, I wrote it on there, uh, but there's money inside, so if you'd have her come over and meet me. And I thought for sure that would be clever, but they're on to, they're, I mean, they control our lives. We're living in, the, well, Wally, you can do something else. They, we're living in the Truman Show, and it, mostly everyone surrounding us is part of the illusion. So I, I want you to know, it, it, it burns me every time. I'm not, it's not personal because I know that you don't know, that you couldn't possibly know. And you couldn't possibly be living in an apartment in New Orleans if you knew and had inherited what our father left us. $700 million goes a long way in 1982. And it's gone a long, long way since that, Lena. Um, and so when you, when you said truth, I, I thought, yeah, it's true. It's painfully true. It's a truth that cuts you to the core. I don't know if I'll ever get over it, ever. It's horrible. Um, and yeah, it's helpful because when you're trying to heal something, I've had a hole in my soul. Oh God, you better not start. I've had a hole in my soul, the shape of my father and you without knowing it, but I couldn't get to it. I couldn't tell you why I'm married. I've got a child. I grew up with parents that stay together. Dad died in bed with my mother. Um, so why would... Why would this be happening? Why don't I feel content? Why don't I feel... Because your soul knows. Your soul knows more than, than you'd ever imagine. 
And so it's helpful because when you get down to the truth, the truth which is powerful and is being held over our head, and you know, they've got our ATM card and they won't give us the code. They know everything about our finances. We know nothing. The only thing I can say about that is just like the sponge in the stomach case. This guy goes in and has surgery. And during the surgery, it's complicated. And the surgeon accidentally leaves a large piece of sponging that they're clearing the blood away and, and sews up the guy. And after his surgery, he becomes more and more ill. He's sick. He, does, he ends up being on antibiotics. He's not healing well. He is, I mean, he's lost all of his energy. And finally, after an exhaustive, you know, back and forth with the doctors, they said, let's go back in and do surgery. And the new doctor goes in, and this guy has a big wad of sponge that has decayed and festered the day he left the hospital. He was, he was bound to be ill, and he tried to sue the hospital, and they go, nope, statute of limitations in the hospital. And the, and the court said, bull, you cannot defend what you do not know exists, and that's our situation. You don't know your dad's John A. Whitney, not to this day. You hate me for telling you that, but it's the truth. And you look a lot like our grandfather came with me, mostly the, the long nose. Um, but anyway, how could you ever know? You're a child, you celebrate November 14th as your birthday, you're brainwashed throughout your life like me on October 24th. I'll tell you, I swear I'm the older twin, so I couldn't possibly be a copycat. But uh, I believe our birth times are 1024 is mine earlier, and yours is 1124. I know this because I see how they doctored up documents, and they've doctored it up, and they probably put the birth times down um, and then put our birth time is 12.20, or birth, birth time is 12.25, and then the, the times as our actual birth date, um, because I saw a lot of that deliberate um, doctoring up of, of documents. It's on a lot of houses, like I, there's a house in Santa Cruz, and it's um, uh, on the assessor's office, it says 2.35. But then I ride my bike up there, and I go, hey, uh, do you know Stacy used to, oh no, she didn't live here, she lived... 325 down the street. So they, you know, they've used um, tactics like claiming houses as their homestead and converted them. But what you need to know, so is it true? Yeah. Is it helpful? Significantly. You have a completely different medical history. If you're worried about tumors uh, in your brain like you, like Louie, uh, that's the, I can't imagine. For me it's like I could be predisposed to lung cancer and I've had an issue where I had a, a mass in my chest, uh, but I didn't know that, that my mother had passed of lung cancer. That's important to me. My father suffered two heart attacks. So it's, it's important. It's important to know your medical history. It's important to know where you came from. Oh, I sit up a little bit s s taller and, and straighter every time I think about where we came from. John Hay is our great-grandfather. He was the... For Abraham Lincoln's secretary, he was the he was uh, served on the Supreme Court. He was a U.S. ambassador as well to the U.K. Um, wow, Helen Hare, Grandma, she was a poet. She was uh, very much into horse racing. She was a secret owner of an, um, an or a baseball team. Our aunt Joan Payson, Joan Whitney Payson, was the first female uh, major league baseball owner and she owned the New York Mets. And on one of the little movies, I put a picture of it, she got cut off, but we have her chin. Oh, and I'm proud of it. I mean, I'm, I, I have tried to hide this in my ears my whole life. I could never wear my hair pulled back like you, because my family called me Dumbo. And they, this is horrible, but they called me nigger lips. I have full lips, and they, you know, have little skinny lips like this. Um, they were different than me, I knew, in every way. They were different in terms of their level of integrity, um, in terms of their math capacity. Um, I took the national math test for my high school. Out of the female and the male, uh, they choose the top student, and then you test at the state level. And then they test those, those scores with the rest of, of the states to see how well they're educating. So I am a whiz when it comes to math, and that's why it was very easy for me to get into air traffic, which is not a simple career. I also am a 
weather observer for the National Weather Service. Um, and that's not a simple, uh, it's a limited aviation weather reporting service that they do, but it's not simple to do. It's not something your, your average Joe does. So um, make no mistake, I, I was smart enough to put the lot to read between the lines, to listen to, and the twin thing was, I mean, I thought when I talked to you, and I talked, talked to you about Alma Ross, and going and visiting her, and, and making these little seaweed stained glass, and, but I, I remember thinking, who in the hell is Aunt, why do we call her Aunt Alma? And why is she dropping off these envelopes full of cash? That must, that's gonna be some kind of child support. Is she my, maybe she's my aunt. I, I couldn't put it together. And then, um, oh man, I had a day, a moment when, if you've, you've played Clue, I knew that Professor Plum did it in the library with the candlestick. And there was no telling me otherwise. There's a lot of guessing about what's more and less likely, but um, it's very likely that our mother and Jock had a long-term relationship because in the will they had a Schedule A. And it's right there and I've copied it to show you, but I just I feel like I'm never going to get a time to sit down face to face with you. Um, but she's given him a gift and it's, uh, it's um, been signed on the bottom, it's two cups. And it says, I'm your true blue, whatever. And she's trying to convince him that I'm it. You know, leave your wife. I will be true to you. I will not. I think that she wanted her twins and she wanted Jock. She wanted to stay home and be a mother. Um, who doesn't? Who doesn't want to uh, raise their children? And he wasn't going to do it. And it was um, an unrequited love or something. But I recognize that she must have been. Even her destined trips are very close to our dad's place, so they may have had a secret affair for years and years. But um, unfortunately, when Louis, I noticed on my passport, it was actually 1975. So when Louis went in and started in his coma, that's when my parents took off. I think our dad said, you know what, I'm gonna step in. I'm gonna step in. The, some of the, the conversations I heard, and they couldn't have been for my family, they couldn't have afforded that. But uh, he was going to send us to finishing school, and that's when your mother and our, my parents said no way in hell. Because first of all, they want the money every month from caring for us. But he had us under guardianship until the age of 18. At the age of 18, you're no longer under guardianship unless you're mentally ill. Or so, and I have no doubt that when you're trying to steal $700 million from two innocent children that could never have known, could never have defended themselves, that you play all sorts of games. So if you look at, at the documents in Florida, what you'll notice is that everyone was sent a letter, a notice of your mom's will, um, except yours was sent via FedEx. So it got delivered to the apartment, but someone could intercept it. And although it would appear that you, you received the documents, anyone could have intercepted it. If you think that for 56 years they have accidentally not informed me, there's something. So you say, is it true? Is it helpful? Is it, is it, um, it's illegal. It's a, called due process. When you inherit, you have to be informed. And to hide us and make sure we don't get informed is not within the parameters of the law unless you're dealing with very high-end people that can manipulate the law. And if there's a cut big enough, people's souls are for sale. And so over and over and over again, people have betrayed us. They're our frenemies. They, they stay close to us because there's a big payoff in manipulating documents and keeping us in the, in the dark. Um, but there's no payoff for us at all. We have to live a life that's not legitimate lacking knowledge of our real family and I noticed that that family is your priority but you were giving your loyalty to people that would not be loyal to you people that have actually stolen from you I wrote a letter I was going to send it to to um, Grace June Cassell whatever her name is because I talked to her on the phone and she of course denied denied uh, and it was gonna I sent you a dear God letter dear God I want a refund you sent me here with a twin sister, and you took her away. And she's not even nice to me. 
I want a refund. And then I was going to say, dear God.